Hey everyone, I'm Ian Douglas, the author of the website techinterview.guide. I do live streams every Sunday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern about topics relevant to interview preparation for the tech industry. I occasionally record longer Q&A sessions and I've started to break those into smaller videos to post. And there'll be information at the end of this video about how to get in contact with me if you have additional questions. Let's get to it. Again, similar kind of question. Someone's asking how much leak code is necessary for somebody starting out in order to be prepared for technical interviews. And I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I've, I've, you know, I've been doing leak code. I've got like 300 problems, 500 problems, 900 problems. And it's not really the quantity. It really comes down to the quality of how you're spending that time. Um, and I use an analogy on the stream and I've used an analogy, uh, you know, in, in other videos and talks where you know, the, the quantity doesn't matter as much as the quality. And it comes down to this sort of analogy. I don't have my prop handy, uh, but I've got like a little three pound weight that I keep near my desk as a, as a visual aid. I could go to the gym and I could work out and say, well, I'm going to do 300 reps on this machine, but I'm not necessarily going to get better at using that machine. I'm not necessarily going to get better at how to build up certain kinds of muscle or how to move properly without somebody there who knows what's going on that can coach me along the way. And so how to get better at these things, like you can, you can certainly take the advice that I just gave in, in my previous question about, you know, um, reverse engineering those leak code answers to come up with a pseudocode to understand the strategy of leak code problems. But just reading through all the strategies isn't the same as actually sitting down and practicing. This kind of goes back to another saying that I heard recently, like you can read all the books you want about how to ride a bike, but until you actually get on a bike and try to pedal the bike yourself, it's not the same kind of experience. At the same time, I could get on a bike and I could try to pedal the pedals and I could try to move the handlebars, but without somebody there telling me what to do, I'm kind of figuring out my own way. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to do it properly or do it the most effective way. So practicing leak code is one thing, but getting feedback from somebody on how well you're doing those problems is just as important. So it's not about grinding 300 or 500 or 900 or however many problems there are in leak code now. It's not about the quantity. It's about getting good feedback from somebody saying, hey, this part of the process you're doing really well. This part of the process, you need to spend a little more time um, you know, figuring out how to do that part more efficiently or more effectively. For example, I see a lot of people do these technical challenges where they hear the problem, they might ask a couple of clarifying questions, and then they immediately jump into code. And I usually coach people afterwards, it's like, okay, well, that process worked out pretty good. But when you jump into the code like that, sometimes to the interviewer, to me, it feels like you're still designing the code while you're writing the code. And that's not as effective as if you take a step back and design it out first and then just go implement your design. If you're trying to figure out the design while you're already writing the code, you may find yourself a bit trapped in a corner because you've, you've kind of already made decisions and changing your mind on that means you've got to now go change actual code that you've written. If you start with a design where you're writing out that pseudocode, it's far easier to change pseudocode, especially for languages like Java or C++, which are very verbose languages compared to high-level languages like Python, Ruby, JavaScript, and so on, and, and C-sharp to some extent, that it becomes much, uh, much easier to write that pseudocode because it's a lot less sort of structure about what you're gonna write to then actually go turn into real actual code. For higher level languages like Python and Ruby, it's a little bit harder to write pseudocode for those because Python's practically pseudocode already. So when it comes to these kinds of problems, um, taking a step back and, and working out that design first actually makes you more effective at writing that code. You tend to refactor your code less. Debugging tends to be a lot easier when you do run into a problem. So I generally coach people like always take a step back, design that code first don't just jump straight into code and start writing code. You have to think through the whole problem. Otherwise, you're going to write some code and then realize like, oh, shoot, I did this part, you know, in a, in a way that now I've got to go back and change. And that takes a lot of extra time because now you're going back and changing a bunch of code and that might have implications on other things. So it's much, much easier if you just take that step back and design it out first. So hopefully those ideas will help, uh, you know, kind of uh, give you some thoughts on 
how to better prepare for those kinds of things that it's not about the quantity of the leak code problems it's about the quality of how you're spending that time and whether or how you're getting feedback worst case scenario uh, i do mock interviews on interviewing.io and i can uh, drop a referral code in the show notes um, and i do bang interviewing dash io um, and I've got a referral code that I'll put in the Twitch chat as well. If you want to sign up for uh, interviewing.io, you can reach out to the support team and you can ask if you can do mock interviews with me specifically. You can ask for me by name. Um, and I also do three session and five session uh, preparation series. So you can actually get me for like three sessions or five sessions. They are more expensive than just the one-off mock interviews. But in those mock interviews, I'll walk you through a technical challenge and I'll give you very direct feedback on this part you did really well, this part you need to spend some extra time. And it's that kind of coaching that's going to make you much, much better at these kinds of problems. So then as you go back and you do more leak code problems or hacker rank or code wars or any of these sites, you're going to be that much more effective. So having a coach, having somebody there that can help you through those is going to be much more effective than just doing it on your own. Hey, thanks for watching. I love helping people out with interview prep, and I hope this video helped you in some way. If you found this Q&A useful, please consider subscribing. You can follow me on Twitch as well for the live stream twice a week. Check out techinterview.guide slash streaming for more information. I also have a daily email series that you can subscribe to on the website. There are never any ads, and when you finish the series, I scrub your information out of my database permanently. Finally, if you have a question that you'd like answered on the stream, you can find my contact info on techinterview.guide. I prefer LinkedIn or email. If you leave your question in a YouTube comment, it might take me longer to find it, but I'll see you next time.